Hey everybody, welcome to Chris's Daily Read Aloud, Magic Treehouse edition. Today, we are reading chapters 3 and 4 of Magic Treehouse book number 11, Lions at Lunchtime, by Mary Pope Osborne. If you'll recall, Jack and Annie are on the plains of Africa, and Annie is headed to the river to help some wildebeests. Chapter 3, Disaster. Come on, Jack, Annie called. She was almost to the river. Just a minute, he shouted. He wanted to study the giraffes and zebras. He pulled out the Africa book and found a picture of giraffes. He read, The giraffe is the tallest animal in the world. Its legs alone can be six feet tall, and its hooves can be as big as dinner plates. The giraffe has a very powerful kick, which makes it dangerous to attack. For this reason, lions tend to avoid giraffes. Jack pulled out his notebook and wrote, Notes on Africa. Lions avoid giraffes. He turned the page and read more. Zebras live in family groups. As no two zebras have exactly the same pattern of stripes, every baby zebra must learn its own mother's pattern. Jack studied the zebras, trying to see their different patterns, but in the hazy afternoon, all the stripes made him feel dizzy. He blinked to clear his head, then read more. Zebras are the first to cross the river because they eat the coarsest grass. After they've thin thinned down the top layer, the wildebeests arrive, and they eat the next layer. They prepare the grass for the gazelles, who come last. Wow, thought Jack. Each animal depends on the one that goes before. He wrote, all animals connected. Jack heard Annie shouting from the riverbank, jump beasts, jump, you can do it, don't be afraid, come on. He looked up, Annie herself was jumping as she called to the wildebeest. Jack sighed, oh, I better stop her before there's trouble, he thought. He put away the Africa book and his notebook. Then he jogged toward the river. His pack was heavy and lumpy, bumping against his back. He'd forgotten to take out the jar of peanut butter and the loaf of bread. He decided to leave them at the treehouse. He turned back, he turned to go back. But just then, Annie's shouting stopped. Jack looked at the river. She'd vanished. Annie, he called. No answer. Where was she? Annie, Jack shouted. She'd completely disappeared. Oh, man, said Jack. Their trip had barely begun, and already disaster had struck. He forgot about the stuff in his pack. He just ran as fast as he could. He wove his way between the grazing zebras and giraffes as he raced to the river. Help, called Annie. Chapter 4, Mud Bath. Jack looked over the edge of the riverbank. Annie had fallen into a pool of mud near the water. The thick black mud was up to her chest. I slipped, she said. It feels like quicksand. Jack threw his pack down his pack and got on his knees. Be careful, said Annie. Don't slip, too. Jack pointed to a tangle of old tree roots sticking out of the bank. Grab those, he said. Annie reached for the roots. Too far, she said, breathing hard. I'm sinking. She was sinking. The mud was up to her neck. Hold on. Jack looked around wildly. He saw a fallen tree branch near the bank. He raced to it. He picked it up and carried it back to Annie. Only her head and arms stuck out of the mud now. Jack let, held out the branch. Annie grabbed it. Hold tight, said Jack. I'll drag you over to the roots. He started pulling on the branch. I'm still sinking, Annie wailed. The mud was up to her chin. Come on, said Jack. You can do it. I know you can. Try, try. Just then, Jack heard a splash. He looked up. On the other side of the wide river, a wildebeest had jumped into the water. Another jumped, then another. They were heading right toward Jack and Annie. Hold on tight, said Jack. He pulled on the stick. Annie moved a tiny bit. Hey, Jack. On the moon, it felt like I weighed 10 pounds, said Annie. And in this mud, I f it feels like I weigh a ton. Concentrate, Annie, said Jack, trying not to slip on the bank. I am. The lead wildebeests were halfway across, swimming towards them. More, many more wildebeests were jumping into the water. It's now or never, said Jack. He took a deep breath. He pulled really hard. Just then, a shadow passed over them. Jack looked up. Uh-oh, he said. A huge vulture circled overhead. It thinks you're near the end, said Jack. Oh, get out of here, Annie shouted at the vulture. I'm fine. In a burst of fury, she let go of the branch. She lunged for the roots. She grabbed them. Yes, cried Jack. Pull, pull. Slowly, Annie pulled herself out. She was covered with the black mud from head to toe. Jack helped her onto the bank, getting mud all over himself. See? Annie shook her fist at the vulture. I'm fine. Now beat it. But the giant ugly bird still circled. Come on. Let's get away from him, said Jack. He pushed his glasses into place. Rats, he said. Now his glasses were muddy. He tried to clean his hands in the grass. Oh no, shouted Annie. Jack turned to her. Well, the wildebeest will get stuck in the mud hole, she cried. She waved her arms at the wildebeest, struggling to swim across the river. Not here, she shouted. Not here. But the frantic swimmers kept coming. And that is the end of chapter four. We'll find out what happens to those wildebeests in chapter five. Ha ha. That's the name of the chapter. I hope you enjoyed those chapters. Come back tomorrow to read chapters five and six, and I hope you have a great day. Stay safe, wash your hands, and have fun, everybody. Bye.